So let's look at each one of these in uh, sequence now. So metal underground water pipe. What constitutes a metal water underground water pipe around an electrode? These would be 10 feet in length or more. It needs to be electrically continuous or made electrically continuous around meters or other items that might need to have bonding. Uh, it could include a metal wall casing if it is bonded to the piping. It can be made electrically continuous by bonding straps that go around and sleeve junctions and pipe structure there. And again, water meters, filters, that kind of thing are commonly uh, there. Must not be coated or otherwise insulated from direct contact with the soil. So again, uh, one thinks about ductile iron pipe used for water gains in the street, but ductile iron has a coating on it to prevent it from corroding. That corroding, that uh, coating typically makes it non conductive to the soil. So, it in itself is not good to use as a underground electrode. But again, copper or you know, uh, galvanized pipe that might be used if you want to go again 10 feet or more in the earth. Not only ground support structure. Uh, this is one that's changed over time. Used to say uh, a yeah, grounded metal structure uh, that was effectively grounded. But, you know, what does effectively grounded mean? And it's changed names a couple of times now. It's metal and ground support structure. What we're talking about is the I beam or the um, base I beam or metal casing case on that might be driven in the ground. And the part that we talk about is here below the earth. That is the ground and electron. What is above the earth here is a, is a conductor. That is not a ground and electron, even though it's continuous. So at the earth, it's an electron. And once it changes above grade, it becomes a conductor. So the in ground support structure, 10 feet or more in the ground, typically a driven piling, or it might be concrete in case uh, down there, so you might have a little case on a casing uh, there at piling. That's concrete in case. An example here of a large one. Now, the green clamps are showing there are actually for the welders, uh, return shipper for the welders. Those are not part of the ground electric system. But here's a case of a very uh, substantial uh, concrete footing with the J bolts in with a lot of rebar there. So, when this all gets completed, uh, it would be a very effective you know, ground and electric uh, building structure. And here we have a structure, say, I want to see the concrete pad. Is it a ground electron? Yes, no, maybe. Um, it may be. So uh, looking at the structure 256C2 says this is a connected to an electrode that where the J bolts, the hold down bolts, are in fact directly connected to the uh, concrete in case of the block, not just building the concrete. That's the key here. They gotta be directly connected. If they're not connected or you don't know, then it is not. A ground and electrode are connected to the ground electrode, and unless you're connected to a different electrode by another means, then the structural metal is not a conductor for interconnecting electrodes. So you be very careful with that going into what's commonly called a Butler building or a tilt up build, tilt or a building set up there, and you got to see the uh, columns that are bolted. If you don't know for sure that it's actually connected to the rebar that's in that footing below, directly connected by welding tie wires or whatever then you don't necessarily have a grounding electrical connection to that steel he uses. No. 